greetings and welcome to Spider McGowan Parts Channel. This time we're going to work on something unique, something that I've had back in the day when I was in the service. I was a seaman apprentice at the time, and this particular device, it was a small fortune. It cost me half of my entire salary for the month. If you could believe it, here's the reveal. It's a Jensen KVS 4000 television. Now what I used this for was playing Conker's Bad Fur Day and my N64 on it. And on the back I have a, um, I have some oh, Velcro, you know, some Velcro strips and stuff and I, I stuck it to the top of my rack when I was sleeping in my, uh, my bunk. And I would have the N64 also Velcro to the top of my rack. And I'd plug it all in and then I would play this with that while I was, you know, sick in quarters, SIQ, um, I, I brought this to the uh, Learning Resource Center on the ship, which is LRC, and I found that playing in the LRC wasn't my most favorite of places. I'd much rather have this um, during or on the mess decks. So I'd play on the mess decks, you know, where, where we all we used to eat, and this is what I would use in conjunction with another console and yeah it was fantastic and it still is uh there's just a couple things uh that i would like to tear it down and maybe maybe be able to fix what's wrong with it and here i'm going to go ahead and show you what is wrong with it this thing's absolutely fantastic If you could see it, I, sorry about the little sunspot from the lens on my camera here. But you can see the lines going through it. This didn't start doing this until about a month into playing with the actual uh, games on it. And I have hooked up right now. Super Mario Brothers. In person, this is absolutely crystal clear. I mean, there, there's no way that you would ever have to worry about fixing sharpness on this particular TFT display. And I just want to open it up, grab my soldering iron, and maybe go along the ribbon cable right here, or rail right on the top or the side or wherever it's actually joined, and then maybe on the actual PCB itself too where it's joined. You know, like the, the daughter border. Yeah. I, I think that would, um, it, it might even just need to be the wire or the zip wire or cable needs to be pinched back down again. So, yeah, we'll end up doing something like that. Here, I'm going to go ahead and, and turn it down so that I don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. And yes, I, I do actually have the stand for it. And this is meant for um, for inside of a car. And that's where this comes into play. And I have the actual car jack for it too. But yeah. So I have the Nintendo hooked up to it via AV cable. And that's what this is right here. Trying to get, yeah, trying to get it so that you can see it. Playing the PlayStation 2 on this was fantastic. You know, everything, every character, every uh, sprite, everything on the game would just, you know, they, they just pop. And this is back in the, you know, back like, what, 2000 or something like that? Here, I'll, I'll check the back of it and see what it is. There's actually a way to uh, adjust the, the brightness for backlight.
It was made in 1998, or at least that's the, the patent on it. When I purchased it, it was more like in uh, 2000. And I had it for my first and second deployment. But you can see where I had all this um, Velcro on the back of it, and I'm going to clean all that off. And then I'll open it up and show the internals of it. That's where you, where you um, have it for the stand. It's very simple. It's very effective for what it is, you know, for a, a TV. I mean, it, I just wished that this was able to pick up channels still. You know, like a, if there was even a channel or a station out there that would go analog again would be amazing instead of everything going digital. I think having at least one station or two even that would be publicly broadcast or to offer us weather report, you know, something, something simple like that even, I think that would be an, an, an incredible or incredibly useful broadcast and that allow us to use these older televisions again but it's still functional I mean you just plug it in with the uh, with the AV and you're perfectly fine so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up I'm not gonna take the time and, and record it when I'm cleaning the back of this and getting all this garbage off the back here because this is just kind of tedious then when I open it up I'll, I'll I'll show you guys before I actually you know do all that so see you guys in a little I am back this time for a teardown of the Jensen KVS 4000 television. It's something that I thought was rather interesting when I uh, when I was inspecting this is that its antenna actually is telescopic, but it's it feels like it's like gasketed or it has a, a hydraulic function to it. You know, like it has some give to it or pull. <laughs> But I'm going to remove this off of here for right now so that it's not going to be in my way. Because I, I really don't want to end up having this break while, not, while I'm working on it. I know it doesn't serve a purpose anymore, but it's still something that I don't want to end up losing or ruining because it's, you know, it's kind of vintage. This thing's in really really great shape it's just that screen just needs to be um, a little TLC on it maybe This washer goes in between the uh, antenna. That's it. So I really didn't have to worry about the antenna too much, but I still wanted to get it off. Shall we zoom in so we can see it a little better? I think we shall. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll go from the top left corner, like before. A lot of flux that I'm going to end up cleaning off this board. Just saying. Now I've never been inside of this, so I really did not know what to expect. Hope I'm not going too fast. 
My, my last video of the uh, mini disc player was a bit. Is that a bodge tub? Look at that one. That right there. Simply fantastic looking. Not bad for a 90s style. It's a television. And what I'll do is I'll zoom out entirely too so that you can get the entire capture of it. Ugh, sorry, I'm getting caught up on the table in here. You can see it's seen sea spray or the uh, ocean water areas along the coastline. Well, it's out in the ship. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and zoom back out again. Absolutely fantastic looking. Yeah, the ribbon wire right there, that's what I'm going to have to probably uh, work on. Not, not this particular one, maybe more down here or something like that. Because I'm, I'm sure there's going to be multi-layered boards in here. That's awesome. Here, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Give me a second here. Uh, this is the area in which I'm going to have to probably focus on. It's going to be capping all this area right in here with a little bit of fresh solder to get that screen working again because I'm looking in here. And you can see the ribbon wire connecting to the actual, if I can point properly, you can see the ribbon wire right here, right there, going into the actual LCD, or TIFF. It's, yeah, it's a TIFF, right? TFT. And the other ribbon wire is the one that goes to the uh, right here, the, the buttons and stuff, as you can see right there. There, focus. There we go. You see the like that. All right, cool. So this is what we're going to end up doing here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, separate this board off of here, and this most likely will be the most easiest part of the all to fix. If I could fix it, we shall see. Before we do any of these things, let's go ahead and give it a quick um, cleaning with some rubbing alcohol, you know, IPA. And I just want to make sure I get all these. I'm going to stay away from these um, these potentiometers or pots. I'm going to stay away from them because I don't want to knock them out of adjustment. Oh, could you imagine that? I'm trying to find that back again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go through and, and clean all this residue up of here and I think it might actually be sea salt and if that's the case yeah we're lucky it's not corroded big time I'll keep my hand out of the view of the camera too but yeah that's definitely not supposed to be on the board anymore so 
I'm going to get all that off of here, at least as best as, as I possibly can. Again, I'll try to keep it my hand out of the way of the camera. Hope you guys like this new song I created on my PlayStation 2. I was using a music maker on it. You see how the IPA just gets that right off, and I mean, if that's not garbage, then it's not supposed to be on there. <laughs> I don't know what is. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it, and, and watch. As soon as I do this, it 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 starts working again. Fine. I, I don't know. We'll see. I don't assume anything when it comes to some of this older technology. I like that my cotton bud is not catching on any of these. Uh, obviously, they must have really done a good job on snipping these down and keeping them uh, as close to the board as possible. And yes, I'm wearing gloves because of the older technology. I believe that they actually had lead in these, you know, lead-based solder. I, that, it may predate that or I'll post postdate that, but you know, just making sure. It wouldn't surprise me if it wasn't. Here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to zoom the camera out again so you guys don't have to see my hand in the way the entire time I'm working on this. Now, I might not even film all of my cleaning of the actual PCP. I might just jump cut. Save, save a lot of time on watching. Is that even soldered together there? It's through hole, but I don't believe that it's actually connecting to its via or via. <sighs> this is just fantastic seeing the inside of this. So I'll give this plenty or ample amount of time to dry thoroughly before I turn it back on again and test the Nintendo on it. This reminds me of the Xbox original with how much flux or that layer of a line of it across the uh, 
DVD ROM drive or the ROM drive on it. Down below, why don't you guys tell me how your day is going? Mine was amazing. I celebrated my 41st birthday. <laughs> yeah, 41 years old. I, was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, yes. And as I become more and more active on social media, I have noticed a lot more birthday wishes than I've ever received in all of my 41 years. Well, of course, you know, when it didn't exist, it didn't exist, but, you know, it's like, it, it's amazing now. It's amazing how close we all are versus what it was before. said I was going to stay away from those pots. If that's what they're called, that's, you know, potentiometers or your adjustments of, of, of a sort. Oh, I, um, I'm, I might as well go ahead and discuss about the mini disc player too while we're working on this. The, uh, the component that I was referring to that with the blue substance on it, if you watch the movie you know, and watch the video that far in, uh, I believe that was actually a bridge rectifier there that you know in one of the diodes had um, had that grease on it and that may have actually been or it was it may have not have actually been grease it may have actually been just dielectric uh, you know whatever's inside these things just that's what's called dielectric Look at them all too. There's so many adjust, you know, ways to adjust this. I'm sure you could probably make this, if, you know, if it was properly designed for overseas too. So you, you can actually pick up maybe even PAL instead of NTSC, unless there's a module inside of it, which I believe there probably would be a module in it. But yeah, that is just. This is just fun. Seeing this. I was also going to comment on the uh, mini disc player that I I didn't get just that particular fault code after I was messing with its uh, optical lens. I was working on it continuously, and I took the actual top cover off, and I found that one of the actual gears on it had failed and it broke like the actual plastic part broke and I was like well no wonder why it wasn't going to work ever again because that particular part failed entirely on it and that's why I was getting a uh, what was it a, a TOC Air S, not just a TOC Air A, and then it went UTOC, and I was like, okay, then it's failed completely. There's there's no way coming back from that after it did the U TAC. But yeah, I um I kept working on it even after I made the video, posted it. Just feel like sharing that. Maybe continuing on with a little bit more of a diagnosis on it. I'm going to stay away from those. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> Lately, I've been watching this uh, this other uh, YouTube channel, and he's just absolutely hilarious. Um, is it Bithead One Thousand? The guy is just brilliant. You should see how he made acrylic consoles. And it's not just one. He made a, a Nintendo, Super Nintendo, as a fish tank out of acrylic. And clear cl acrylic PlayStation 2, which I love. I absolutely adore that console. That That is just an amazing, amazing accomplishment. It looked like it took absolutely forever to make the play the fat PlayStation 2, you know, the big one. And it's completely clear, so... I mean, he cut parts out, got things all around, and it, it was just like you could see the disc playing inside of it. You guys should really check that channel out. Yeah, I'm giving him a shout out. The work and effort he put into that is just, yeah, he, des he deserves it. Um, I'll also leave a, a, a link in the description box below for uh, Gadget UK and as well as uh, my mate Vince so that you guys can take a look at those YouTubers as well. They they do way 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 extensively into this stuff. They, I mean they delve into this. This is I, I receive a lot of inspiration for what they're willing to work on and how precise they are with reflowing uh, um, just you know these surface mount components and just just to have that skill set alone is just incredible very very useful so if I get told to take them out of there I, I will but yeah definitely definitely to get a chance uh, take a look at their channels that, that I just suggested With 8-bit head uh, 1000, um, parental guidance, you know, <laughs> it's for adults. It's, it's, you know, I mean, I, I'm sure some of his episodes are definitely for, uh, for, for all ages, but some of them are meant specifically for our age or the, the age that I'm um, most going for is probably between 30 and 50 around there. Even mine's not too kid friendly here. I mean, I, I talk about war stories and stuff, and and that's not really something that I would want to have uh, children hear. They don't have to hear that stuff. Now, if they're thinking of joining in the military, then that's different. They're not children anymore, right? They're, excuse me, they're young adults. Oh, man, I better not get the hiccups. So, back on talking about my birthday today. Yeah, I've been digressing a lot here. I got a lot going on in my mind right now. And this this right here is keeping me at least focused on the task at hand. And I'm able to talk about some of this stuff during my day. It uh it dumped on us uh, some white fluffy stuff. I'm not gonna say the word because then I'll end up jinxing us and then I'll end up getting a whole bunch of it. You know, being in Minnesota and all. And, uh, you know, in the five years that I've lived in this home, this is the, uh, the, probably the first time I have ever been able to get out and shovel. Seriously, this is the first time in thus many years to get out and physically shovel my own pathways, my steps, my patio. Uh, I and I yeah, and I did it on my birthday, which was it was just I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, why wasn't I able years ago to do this? Oh, there's some styrofoam pieces in here. Little pieces of styrofoam. 
I thought, I, I seriously, I thought that was going to be corrosion, like big bubbles of corrosion in there, but no, it's just pieces of styrofoam. And I think it's around by the speaker area in here. You know, like, see that little piece of styrofoam? It was probably from when it was packaged. But this, this thing is, it's old, man. And they don't make this anymore. And when I looked it up online, I, um, there's no pictures of it either. This is probably going to be one of the only videos you're going to see of this particular modeled television. Um, at least through the one search browser that I used. You know, YouTube. I mean, yeah. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flood as many pictures and get as many um, close-ups as we possibly can because this TV is awesome. It's, I mean, back in the day when I bought it yeah, I'm changing subject matter again. <laughs> back in the day when I bought this TV there was only two available of this model. And then there was another one that was available too. So what happened is that I just lost it there. Didn't I? Sorry. Give me a second here. Get all that out of there. Uh, what happens is that I and a buddy of mine, his nickname was Zippy, because when you picked on him. Ooh, would he get irate and riled up and just, you know, like, spin him up? <laughs> and so they call him Zippy. And that's, he was stuck. He stayed with him forever. <laughs> yeah. Mine was just my last name because it was very easy. But I won't divulge that over on YouTube or on other channels. I mean,. Instagram, I had it up there for a little bit and all my uh, documentation and but so not to go too far ahead of myself here but uh, yeah we, uh, we we went to the Naval Exchange and of course these TVs were sitting out next to those mini disc players you know I was like no way so you got the mini disc player and a television and these are both things that I could really use right now out on ship when I'm, you know, not wanting to feel like going out and getting drunk <laughs> or, uh, or drinking adult beverages. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, uh, sorry about that. It was like $299 for this TV. And then the other one was 199 and it looked really dumb. It was like a, a really, really, really weird looking model make. And it wasn't even the same uh, brand. So it had no brand recognition on it, like like this one. And it just, I don't know, it looked really kind of, it looked janky. It just looked cheesy. It, it, was, it was not a cool looking television. And, and when you're sitting at these things playing, you know, like say Zelda on the N64, you're gonna want your TV to look pretty, you know, pretty. At least the the bezel on it to look, you know, the similar in size as the screen is. You don't want a big, huge plastic housing or cradle on it. And you have a really tiny four-inch screen. You know, well, that's what this it is. This is four-inch, but it's like, yeah, it just it was, it didn't look right and. What happened is that we ended up, um, Zippy and I, we went to the NEX, we picked up two of these. I purchased both of them. He paid me back for the other one, right? As we were going along and working on these and, and playing them and all that, he, uh, he made the mistake and asked another shipmate, that's what we called each other, shipmates. Um, to watch his stuff at the LR, in, you know, in the LRC or Learning Resource Center. 
So in doing so, that that person that was supposed to be watching his stuff wasn't watching his stuff. And someone went into his bag and stole this television right out of it. And I was like, oh no, man. Are you seriously saying that somebody went into your stuff and stole it? They knew it was yours, man. Why would somebody do that to you? Why, why would you... Well, for one, why did you trust anybody to uh, leave your stuff laying around? Without it being me, because because you knew no, you know you knew damn well that that I would take care of your your gear, because I'd be sitting right there next to it the entire time we were in here. And at at this point, I um I already purchased a laptop, and I was using that laptop more than I was using my my little television and the uh, N64 because I had a lot of, you know, just a lot of stuff. And he had a, a huge Nintendo collection and then I also had my own Nintendo collection and that's where I would keep Nintendo ROMs for it and emulation. And that's why when you see the emulator, that's the same emulator I used back then and only had a handful of, of uh, ROMs for it. It was amazing. And I, used that a lot. I mean, that's that's basically, instead of having all these extra consoles, I was able to use a newer laptop other than the Gateway Solo 1150 CL, the one that I've, I've showed a video up, or I have a video up of. Yeah. But yeah, he got his, he had his, um, actually stolen from him, and I was, and it was just my, you know, the stomach sunk. Because I was like, man, that I don't know what I would do if I would have lost a th you know almost a, you know a three hundred dollar television. It's a portable TV. session out and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Alright, so this cleaned up nicely. Let's go ahead and take the motherboard out. Wow, those are some really, really long screws. Yeah, there's this, they're just zips. Give me one second. Okay, I am back. No, I'm just making sure that, because some of these, they, you know, they've got color coordination, and this one right here goes here, so I, I just need to make sure that I have it recorded, so that in case I forget which one goes where. You know, I'm just making, just making sure. Okay, we can move the screen now out of the way. Or I would say this is daughter board right here. This um, here, get over here real quick. This is daughter board right here, and this would be here uh, motherboard for the actual screen. And this would be for the tuners right here. I, I'm just you know, want you know mental notes. That's all, just mental notes. Seeing that this may have been loose 
this right here for the picture is that this whole section right here there, there might be actually a loose contact in there or even right here too there might even be a loose contact up here uh, coming from the screen but I think this up here is how it's controlled as this is your uh, yeah your control and this will be actually your display I, I love that this is not underpopulated you know like there's nothing missing on the board that it looks like it would be at one point in time or an, you know like a, a model that's higher on the scale of the 4000 series and I know this one has a uh, remote for it too oh see you know what you could probably put battery to it or it had um, it had something maybe an amplified antenna oh, yes That would be an amplified 5 volt antenna there. Speculation. I don't know for sure. Isn't that Rev 6? 1997. 7th month, 5th day. I'm, I'm getting it right there from the board. That is awesome. Just. Check, checking the caps too. Make sure none of them are leaking out. And if they are leaking, I'd have to uh, order some caps. Everything looks really, really good yet. I don't see any um, of the tops of them either where they're bulging. So I put it back together again. It, it went to back together way easier than I thought it was going to. I made sure that the uh, zip wires fit in there properly. But yeah, doesn't it look a lot more uh, clean? A little bodgy right there. I, I hear that from other engineers. They call this a botched job or something like that. So that's that's kind of neat that they would have to put that there like that. Look at the size of that component, though. I almost want to take that off of there and put my own piece of tape down. You know, and that's like a. That's where you plug it in at, too. Okay, let me... It's gonna focus, come on. Oh, it's not gonna focus. There we go. Still doing it. It's fine. It was a wonderful teardown. Either way, at least people get to see the inside of it. If there's a way to fix that actual screen, I would do it. I'm just not willing to go into the actual LCD part of it. There's no need. It still functions the way I want it to. Give me a second here. Playing the game through the screen on my phone or the uh, camera is just virtually impossible. I want this extra life instead.
After a while, you just don't even notice it. Again, I'm watching it through the camera instead of watching it on the actual screen. It's good enough. I had fun. I really enjoyed taking this particular uh, television apart. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care.